Yo, what's up everybody, man? Um, welcome to Twitter Entertainment. Uh, my name is Myron Thomas Sr. And I swear to give you the, my honest opinion on sports, politics, social justice, all kind of fun stuff and everything else. But mostly I just love sports. And as you probably can tell, yes, I'm a New York Giants fan also. But um, I'm going to get right into it. I mean, you no, know, uh, I just want to just provide a different aspect different outlook on sports and you know what I'm saying and just have fun along the way so if you like my channel everything else I hit the like button subscribe comment and if there's some topics you want me to talk about please you know leave me a comment let me know I mean I want to talk about anything and everything you know what I'm saying but let's get into this weekend in sports uh especially the uh the college football playoffs this weekend you know it featured the the ohio state buckeyes versus the clemson tigers and the alabama St. crimson tide um going against the fighting irish in notre dame um you you gotta understand it three out of these four teams have um been in this college playoffs basically almost every year you know what i'm saying i think ohio state missed one year a couple of years clemson wasn't there you know, but basically these teams, basically, you know, they know what the college playoffs is about. Notre Dame is the only uh, team that's in there that's really, you know, say, new to the whole college playoff, you know, thing. And, um, you know, and, you know, uh, surprisingly, yes. I mean, you know, I am a, an Ohio State Buckeye fan. So, yes, I was happy that, you know, Ohio State got that, you know, redemption over Clemson from last year's Fiesta Bowl. Believe me, I don't. Because that was just basically, it was like Ohio State could should have won that game. It was just, you know, Chris Olave just went, you know, he went left instead of going right. And when Justice Field threw that ball, it was too late, you know. and um, But it was good uh, to see Ohio State win that game under the leadership of Justin Fields. Um, the hit that he took in that second quarter to still turn around here and lead this team shows what really what the Ohio State Buckeyes are really, really about. You know, it, it's you no, know, it's gritty. I mean I mean everybody questioned the secondary and that yes, Clemson has is is not to be, you know, uh, a team to take lightly at all. They will score a lot of points on you really fast. But you also got to, you know, you you know, as long as you can keep Trevor Lawrence and uh, Etienne uh, under control, you basically got the whole offense. You know, you, you can control the rest of the offense. Um, uh, the Alabama-Notre uh, Dame game, oh, my goodness, man. Um, I just think that Notre Dame is just, they're a year away, you know, um, that basically if they continue to have some of the pieces that they had this year. Uh, but we got to understand that like people like me and other people that have been watching college sports for the past 30 plus years, you know, this is not the same Notre Dame that we saw in, you know what I'm saying, the 80s and, and early 90s and stuff like that. This is not that Notre Dame. You know what I'm saying? The Notre Dame that we saw back then was like, if you got – a chance, right, to play at Notre Dame, you almost was guaranteed a spot, you know, um, in the NFL. You know, if you started at Notre Dame, you got almost, was more than likely got drafted, you know what I'm saying, in the NFL. Um, this is not the Notre Dame that had the, the TV deal with NBC where every single Notre Dame game was played on NBC, you know. This is not that Notre Dame, you know what I'm saying. This is a Notre Dame that has to build – back up that reputation, you know, and that, uh, that legacy. Um, and, uh, uh, they, they're a little bit away, you know, they're a little bit away. Um, Alabama is back in there only because, you know, um, you know, they lost their quarterback last year at the end, you know what I'm saying? And it just, you know, they were, they fell off right at the end. So, um, but this is going to be a very good national championship game, Alabama and Ohio state. I really, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to it. And, um, you know, I'm on route for my Buckeyes all the way, all the way. Go Bucks! And we're gonna switch gears a little bit. We're gonna turn around here. We're gonna talk about the National Football League. Um, basically, I mean, we had basically all the teams that won this uh, the, uh this game. I mean, we had the uh, we had the Bucks win, Giants, Patriots, uh, Viking, the Browns, who pulled off a last minute heroic comeback. Uh, 
uh, at home, uh, and I, and I'm from Cleveland. You know, I ain't gonna lie, I'm Giants, but I am uh, I'm, I'm still a die. I mean, I still got the Browns in my heart. Um, that and I love it when the Browns beat Pittsburgh. I mean, I grew up uh, um, a real big Browns fan growing up. You know, with Brian Sipe and you know Mike Pruitt and Greg Pruitt and you know all those guys and and everything else and you know. Um, you know, Bernie Kozar, Eric Metcalf, Webster Slaughter, you know, Clay Matthews, all them guys. You know what I'm saying? That's what I grew up on. And, um, you know, uh, it's good to see the Browns beat the Steelers. I mean, that was the one game that, that it didn't matter what happened all year long, right? As long as the Browns beat the Steelers, then everything was okay in the universe, you know? Uh, but then we also had like a uh, Baltimore win, uh, which we knew Baltimore was going to be Cincinnati. That was, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, um, I would say with Joe Burrows going out for Cincinnati, it kind of, they, they lost, they just lost their mojo. You know, it just, you know, they were really riding on the hopes of, you know, this being the hot, no, the previous Heisman Trophy winner, national champion winner, and everything goes to that. I ain't gonna lie, his first couple of games coming out, he played pretty well. He really did. He really played pretty well. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, for him to go out and everything goes, it kind of like deflated the rest of the team. And it was like, you know, um, they already were playing for next year already. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, then we have Buffalo, who surprisingly, right, this reminds me of a Buffalo team in the early 90s, you know, with Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas and, you know, uh, uh, you know, those guys, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, the only unfortunate thing was that, you know, that, that Buffalo teams went to four straight Super Bowls and lost all four. And to that part about it, they lost all to one division. And that was the NFC East. <laughs> it was surprising because they lost to Washington, the Giants, and Dallas twice. You know, um, and it's, you know, um, but it's good to see that, you know, uh, I, I would say I, I am always a person who I like to see the turn of the tide in sports. That I, I'm, I don't like seeing the same teams on top year after year after year after year. You know, like for instance, it's good to not see the Patriots in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? That they didn't win the division this year. You know what I'm saying? Because if you look at, I mean, you think about it in the past 20 years in the AFC East division, it's always been the Patriots. You know what I'm saying? If you look at it, I mean, you, you think about some right within the past 20 years, right? That nine times out of the past 20 years, we've seen the Patriots in the Super Bowl. That's almost half the times that we've seen. Watch Super Bowls, we've seen the Patriots, you know, and uh, it's good to not see them in there. We also had uh, Seattle um, beat San Francisco, which I, I, I say um, Seattle is just, they're so one-dimensional. They're one-dimensional. I mean, even though they do have DK Metcalf and they got Lockett, but it's that's about it. You know what I'm saying? It's Russell Wilson and, you know, two receivers, and that's it. It's, you know, and it's not enough. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It, they fight, they play good, but it's just not enough. You know what I'm saying? It's just not enough. And, like, um, it, you'll, you see it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you can slow them down, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, but they can catch you slipping easily, you know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, San Francisco was basically winning this game, but then it just, you know... Crept out on them. It did? Hold on. But did San Francisco play them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we had the uh, Rams win. Uh, Colts win. T Tennessee. Vegas. Chargers. Packers. New Orleans. And <laughs> Washington. What can I say about the Washington Philadelphia game. I am disappointed um, in the Philadelphia Eagles. 
in their organization. And no, I can't say the organization. I am disappointed in their coach, Doug Peterson. Period. Right? Because you cannot, you cannot tell me, right, that you just threw that game. You can't tell me that. You can't sit up there. And I know you have to say it because, you know, that's what the, the politically correct thing to say is to uh, uh, say um, that, oh, we, uh, we, I played to win the game, but you didn't put the person who put you in there. The person who scored the only scores you had. You took them out. You took them out. You were only down by three. You were only down by three. Why did you take this guy out? For <laughs> an unproven quarterback? You justify it by saying that all the other players were on the team. But when the main player that controls the ball is the weakest person on the team, that the weakest person on the field, the sideline, when they showed Jason uh, Kelsey and all of them on the field, they, they even was looking like, what the heck are we doing? But out of respect for their coach, they got to be like, no, no, we can't say nothing. But this is ridiculous. This is, I mean, it was, it was a sham. It was a complete sham. It was. It was a complete and utter sham to see this. I, I watched the game up until the uh, the second, the, his second fumble. Everything, his first pass and interception. Second drive. The defense gets you the ball back. You turn around here, you fumble. I mean, come on. And, and you still leave this guy in the game. You still leave him in the game. What's that saying? You threw the game. You threw the game. Right? You rather seeing Washington be in the playoffs. Right? Then you beat them. Because, see, really, it had nothing to do with the Giants. Right? Right? So you basically said, I don't care, I don't care about just losing this last game and, and just completely just, you know, looking like complete idiots. I'd rather Washington be in the uh, uh, playoffs. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. That's crazy, man. I mean, it, it just it just totally just blew my mind. And and the, as the rest of the NFL look back and watch it, I mean, you know, because a lot of the team, they really didn't care because, see, shit, that part about it. By the time it got to that Sunday night game, all the other playoff spots, all the other playoff spots were, were, were filled. Filled, scheduled, done, everything, yo. Only thing they was waiting for was to see if Philly, if it was going to be either Washington or the Giants to play Tampa Bay. Right, and the Giants did their part, you know. Even though I, I do believe that, you know, um, there are a few games earlier in the season that, you know, uh, that uh, should have been uh, different, you know. Uh, but you know, at the end, the Giants did their part. They did their part. They won. They beat Dallas. You know, Philly was supposed to do their part. They could have won that game. And I believe that Jalen Hurts, right, could have won them that game. Because the trip out part about the only thing that they scored after that was just a field goal. The, and here was the thing that I, was, that I was texting a friend of mine who's a Philadelphia fan. The defense is playing like they want to win the game. The defense wasn't giving up. It just gave up on offense. The defense wasn't giving up. Only thing they gave up with three more points. So basically, you're saying that you could have turned around here. Now, I can understand going for, on that fourth down. I can understand being aggressive because it's the last game of the year. You, you, you go all out. I understand that. I understand it. But to take the quarterback out that got you that far, that got you that far, only within three points, right, of tying the game, maybe even if he turned around here and if he maybe would have did another scoring drive. You know, but y'all gave up. Y'all gave up. You know, um, 
And I, I, I just said that, 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 I mean, but no, but we got the playoffs coming up. You know, I'll cover, I'm going to cover the uh, playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Going into this uh, next weekend, everything else. I just want to start this new year off with, you know, starting off this and doing it and uh, having some fun. And, you know, uh, no, I'm also going to do basketball. I'm, I'm going to let you know, yes, I am going to do basketball. But there's nothing really exciting. The truth of part about it is that there's nothing really exciting going on in basketball right now. I mean, Steph Curry had an amazing game, but, you know, we've known Steph Curry to have amazing games. I mean, he never had this. He would score like 62 points, you know, and uh, it was like, you know. But, see, he's not doing it as a this is who he is. He's doing it because he's trying to prove that he can still be that player or whatever. He you know he's still he he's a three time champion, still trying to prove something. Basically, you no, know, and everything goes, and it's you know um, you know um, I mean everybody expect the Lakers to do good, the, the Clippers to do good. You know, there's some shocking team that like the Knicks and Cavs that are pretty doing pretty good right now, but you know it's still early in the NBA season. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what's going on after the All Star break. You know what I'm saying? Let's see who who what positions everybody in at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like Phoenix right now, it, they were a strong team. Truth up part about it, they were actually undefeated in the bubble, and they just added Chris Paul. You know what I'm saying? So, you know that makes them a little bit even stronger. You know, you know. But we'll see. We'll see how the um. You know, we'll see how this um. Rest of this NBA season, you know, pans out and everything else. And I'm just getting started. We, I'm going, you know, this is going to be backdrops. This is going to be all kind of stuff and everything else. I'm trying to attract not just football fans, but basketball fans, all the type of stuff. I'm trying to attract everybody. You know what I'm saying? Come, you know, you know um, and let's have some fun. Let's do, let's do this. This is not just my channel. This is our channel. You know what I'm saying? This is, no, it's not just for me. It's also for me to help you, for you to even help me. You know what I'm saying? You know, and let's all just have some fun. I'm out of here. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.